And welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. And once again, on behalf of Mark, Alice, and myself, we want to just greet you in the wonderful, the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Greetings. Greetings. And we're just, we're glad that you can join us and be with us for this time. Yes, we are. And I just, I do want to mention okay. that you can go to our Facebook page, in, Facebook In Search of Christianity, and leave any comments or questions or suggestions you have so we can we can kind of communicate back and forth with one another rather than just us talking right. over across the video. Yeah. Uh, we're going to continue on. I think this is our 28th or 29th week in the program now. Just We're over half a year. And we were talking last week about being prepared. And we're going to go back and we're, or continue on in that theme this time around. But before we do that, I'm going to ask Brother Mark if you would have said God's blessing upon our time together. Thank you, oh God, you say in your word that we're two or three people, you are here in our midst. So Lord, we thank you for that. Yes, and Lord, just guide us where you want us to go in your word yes. and put it into our hearts as well as our brains. Amen. Amen. So as I said, we're talking about being prepared, and then the question may arise, reasonably, prepared for what? For what? For what's coming in your life. <laughs> because, you know, it says many are the afflictions of the righteous. The Lord does deliver us from them all. Yes, He does. It says, you know, don't be surprised at the fiery ordeal that comes upon you for your testing. In this world, mm -hmm. we have trials and tribulations. Mm -hmm. And this world is coming to an end. Yes. Now, I, I surely don't know when, but those things, it could be any time, I mean, it could really be close, given what's going on in the world around us today. Yes. So we have to be prepared, and that's what we talked about in our last program, but I want to, as I say, I want to continue on in that. Um, you have to be ready for what's coming in your life, mm -hmm. all right? We ended, we were talking about pride, remember we're talking about pride. We were actually we're in Second uh, Timothy chapter three, and we were looking at verses one and two, talking about in the perilous last days, how men would be lovers of self, and that is obviously pride. And I promise you that if you're self-dependent, if, if you're operating in pride, you are not prepared. You are not prepared for what's coming. You know, it says in Proverbs that pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a, a Fall before, yeah, before stumbling, before a fall. So pride makes you think that you're the answer. Yes. Or that somebody owes you the answer, right? It makes you feel entitled. Mm. You can't be the answer. I promise you that in your, in your lifetime, you will encounter things that are far beyond your ability to deal with them. Right. You know? And if, if you don't have some place to go outside of yourself, if you're dependent on your own strength, if you're dependent on your own wisdom, if you're dependent on your own planning, you are headed for that destruction. You are headed for that fall. That's a fact. It's a fact that obviously the world doesn't understand, but we, the remnant, the bond servants of Jesus Christ, absolutely have to understand, particularly in these perilous last days. So what do you have to be dependent on? I'm just, I, you know, there's a really pretty song that I've heard. In Christ Alone. Yes. Right, want to sing it for us? No, no? okay. <laughs> okay. But that, that has sound basis in the word. And I want to read to you from Psalm 62. Uh, in, in verse 1 and 2 it says, Psalm 62, it says, My soul waits in silence for God only. From Him is my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I shall not be greatly shaken. And then verse 5 and 6, it says, My soul, wait in silence for God only, for my hope is from Him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I shall not be shaken. If you're counting on anything in your life, 
besides the Lord to deliver you from those trials, those tribulations, those temptations, those things that go on in your life. You're, you're not prepared. I mean, it's that simple. You are not ready for what's coming in your life, okay? And in Acts, when we ended last week, we, were, we ended right on the stroke of the time to end. On, we were in Acts 2 and 4 looking at them, where it talked about the believers being of one mind. There was unity in the body of Christ. And nobody considered anything to be their own. There was a selflessness, not a selfishness, right? And it says it, and there was no need among them. Yes. Now, can you look at the church today and say, there's no need? No, you cannot. Well, what's the difference? The difference is self. Because selfishness is the fruit of, of pride, mm -hmm. all right? We also talked about if there was no need, then we're talking about, we're going to go into greed. Because pride always leads to greed. Mm -hmm. I don't know that. Because everything is about you. Okay, what you have. What you deserve to have, right? What you want. In Second Timothy, chapter 3, you know, in that second verse, he starts out, for men will be lovers of self. Then he goes on and says, and lovers of money. Okay, lovers of money. Men will be lovers of, of money. Lovers of self and lovers of money. Now, let me be perfectly clear. So don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Money is not evil. No. Right? That's it's correct. the love of money that is the problem. Leads to that's what that's what Paul wrote to Timothy in the first letter he wrote. He said, "For the love of money is the root of all evil, and some by longing for it have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs." And it, does that say it, it's the root of all evil or source of evil? Depends on which translation you're using. Okay. okay. <clears throat> but you know what? I mean, you may get into evil without it being caused by the love of money, but I promise you, the love of money will always bring evil into your life. Yes, it's yes. A, it just throws open the door. Because it's an idol. Well, it is, because the love of money, when you begin to, you'll begin to trust in money. Yes, yes. And that, as Paul says in Colossians, is idolatry. Right. So you have an idol in your life. Mm -hmm. And this is why Jesus said, Beware and be on your guard against every form of greed because it's idolatry. In the Sermon on the Mount, remember I've said this and I, I will stand by this till my last breath on this planet. Everything is wrapped up in the Sermon on the Mount. Yes. That is the message. That is the message. And everything else is basically either leading up to it to prepare you for that or commentary on it. Okay? And Jesus said, No one can serve two masters. For he will either hate the one and love the other, or he'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, God and wealth. Mm -hmm. Matthew 6, 24. It's an impossibility. But he, he always said, and I, you know, we did a study uh, quite a while back, which is still up on the Bible Talk site, on the Sermon on the Mount. All right? We did 29 out of 30 hours on the Sermon on the Mount. People think that having a lot of money will serve them. Jesus said, no, no. It's not, the money's not going to serve you. You're going to wind up serving the money. You right? become the slave. But when you start to put your trust in it, here, here's the thing about trust. And I just use this example because it's in the prophet Isaiah. Mm -hmm. And it's just one of many examples where people are trusting in, their, you know, they're astrologers. They're going to find out what they need to be doing, what's their, what their fate is and everything, going to astrologer. And God speaks through Isaiah and says, you're wearied with your many counsels. Let now the astrologers, those who prophesy by the stars, those who predict by the new moons, let them stand up and save you from what will come upon you. Isaiah 47, 13. You know, if you put your trust in the world and the things of the world, God's going to sit back and say, okay, you trusted in them, let them save you. You trusted in your money in the bank? How secure is that? I don't know how old you may be, but my goodness gracious, you're probably in these times old enough to remember how wealth can fail you. Here in the United States of America, which is probably one of the most secure places, 
but it's done it around the world. There's been economic collapse. And I don't believe that we have seen what true economic collapse can be. And, it, and if you're not prepared, it will lead to despair. You know, in the great collapse, in the, the, the 29, mm -hmm. the market collapse, people in southern Manhattan, I mean, they're flinging themselves out of the windows in despair. And we've had close to that in the economic collapse that was worldwide. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe that we've seen anything yet mm -hmm. as compared to what's coming. Mm -hmm. So you need to be prepared for those things. And the only way you can be prepared is by learning to trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Like I said in the very beginning, that my soul waits in silence for God only. Mm -hmm. From Him is my salvation. Right. If you're training yourself, learning to trust in God, you are preparing yourself for whatever comes, okay? I, I wanted to take some time in this program to just share with you, because I think this is truly, truly important. And I want to do this as an encouragement, as a testimony. You know, it says that the saints overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Many of you know, and some of you may not, that years ago, oh gosh, over, over 20 years ago, Alice and I moved to Belize, Central America as missionaries. Mark went with us, along with another couple who were part of the church that I had started and pastored in Central Florida. And we had not been there long at all when Alice and I were coming back one evening from, from Belize City to our camp. We had a camp out in the bush. The bush. No running water, no electricity. And on the way back, we had stopped and we had uh, dinner that evening with a Belizean couple who were just a lovely Christian couple. And, you know, we were just really getting involved with them. And on the way back, I came around a curve on the, on the road. And the roads down there, I, I, it's like I said, it's 20, almost a quarter of a century ago, so I'm not quite sure what they are now. But they were very, very primitive. Mm -hmm. No lights, no lines, very narrow. And I saw a truck that was broken down by the side of the road. So I stopped to help this fellow who was standing there. Because you can be on that road all night and nobody comes along at all. You can be. That was not the case in our situation. I stopped to help him, pulled up in front of him. And, and I got out. of. We had a full-size Ford Bronco uh, back then. And I got out to help him. And I was standing there. And Alice was sitting in the Bronco, mm -hmm. and along came a speeding semi-truck, probably doing 50, 60 miles an hour, and he just kind of plowed into us. And he hit me and sent me flying through the air. Uh, I, didn't even lose, I didn't lose consciousness. I went flying through the air and landed by the side of the, the road. Alice was in the Bronco, and the Bronco was demolished, all except for the passenger seat in which she was sitting. Well, I landed out on this road, and I, you know, I flew as an air crewman in the U.S. Navy, and I've been through an awful lot of survival and first aid <coughs> courses. I, I literally did a better diagnosis of my injuries while I was laying there than they did in the hospital shortly thereafter. In Belize, the hospital in, in Belize. In hospital in Belize, yes. <coughs> and when I landed, now my shoulder was broken. I was bleeding from the head profusely. Um, my pelvis was broken in a few places, so all my ribs on my right side were broken, my hip was broken, my, my, my leg was pretty much destroyed, my foot was up by the, my head. Mm -hmm. uh, and my diagnosis was, you're dead. <laughs> that, that, was, that was pretty much it. I, I, and That's pretty much the conclusion. Yeah, but it proved to be a very exciting time, <laughs> because it took a couple of hours before an ambulance finally got out. That's another. You, that's you can read story. the book if you want. To yeah, I'll, to remind me to tell you. Um, <clears throat> but I, I assumed at that moment that I was about to die. I mean, that, that seemed a reasonable conclusion, given the extent of my. I could literally feel myself bleeding internally, and I heard a voice. You can take this for what you want, but I heard a voice, and that voice said to me, "Do you believe what you've been preaching?" Because by that time, I've been preaching for many years, right? Now, when God said that to me, I knew immediately what he was talking about. Now, I, I, I was going to say, I believe. I know that God is a miraculous healer. I've seen that happen many, many times. 
but that's not what I thought of at that moment. What I thought of at that moment was, am I ready to see him face to face? Yes. And I said, yes, Lord, because you want to know why? I was prepared. Yes. I was prepared because for the all years prior to that, I had been focused on what Jesus had said. He who believes in me, if you die, you're still going to live. Mm -hmm. That's a paraphrase, mm -hmm. but it is the truth. So I was prepared knowing that my going to be in front of Jesus Christ was not dependent on the works that I had done, on the missionary work that I was doing at the moment. It was purely and simply dependent on his amazing grace. Mm -hmm. And knowing that, I said, yes, Lord, I'm ready. I was prepared. Yes. And I heard him say, not now. So I knew that I was going to live. Didn't take the pain away. As a matter of fact, I said to Alice, who now had found me out in the tall grass by the side of the road, that I, I couldn't imagine that it was possible to feel the pain I was feeling and stay conscious. I said, this, this pain is like unbearable. And then I said, well, that's pretty stupid. I'm bearing it. Okay. But then I lay there and I began to praise God. I began to praise God as hard as I possibly could, as much as I possibly could. You know why? Because I was prepared. Because I can't tell you how many times I had heard, because I was saying it. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't care what happens yes. in your life. That you had better. You preached, I yeah. preached that sermon so many times in so many different places. I don't care what happens in your life. You had better praise God. Not because it's it's not dependent on your circumstance. You, we praise him because of who he is, yes. because he is worthy of our praise, regardless yes. of what's going on in your life. Absolutely. Because I had heard that so many times, because I had preached that so many times, I was prepared to do it. To do it. That's right. And I did it. You didn't say what the sermon, what you said. I don't care if you get run over, get by, run a over by a truck. You better lay <laughs> there and pray that in the Sanford House of Praise. Yes, he did. Yes, well, I, one of the things I've learned and it's quite exciting, it's is that God gives me opportunity, and he has for 40 years. He has given me opportunity to actually live what I preach. That's right. Practice what you preach. Yes, so that's, that's a joy in my life. Amen. You would think that it would make me be more careful about what I preach, but it doesn't, because I believe in radical Christianity, and I'm going to preach the whole word. I'm going to preach the whole counsel of God, like Paul said, from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. And if God chooses to bless me by allowing me to live it and experience it, all I can say is, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. So anyhow, they finally, I was there for two hours, as I said, waiting for the ambulance to come. When I, I have to laugh when I say ambulance, because it was kind of an old British lorry with just a flat metal floor. And they put me on a canvas stretcher and moved me around. And that was an experience. And put me in there and then drove down the bouncy road, picked up a hitchhiker along the way, and took me to the hospital where they did their very best to kill me. I mean, they, they punctured my lungs during the middle of this. Wait, no, you punctured your lung. They told you to get up and... To well, no, no. Walk around. They, to they, notice. They, sit up. They they punctured my lungs when they tried to put me back in. They made me get out. Them. They told me I was bruised. I just been hit by a semi truck doing about 55, 60 miles an hour, and they're telling me I'm bruised. Yes. It's a little primitive. So they made me get out of the the bed they had put me in, and I've got a massive cast, plaster cast on my leg now. Mm -hmm. And they put me in a chair, which was killing me because my like I said my pelvis was broken my hip my pelvis was broken in three places my hip was broken yes. and they make me sit down, and my ribs are all broken and then to get back in the bed they don't help you in the hospital so they they got a couple of the visitors in the hospital and they grabbed me around the chest lift me up put back in the bed and pew, punctured my lungs yes. but well, I know something I was prepared yes. for that no for that event no. no I was prepared for any event That's right. And I'm going to tell you, you have to be prepared for any eventuality because you simply don't know what's coming. That's right. You don't. Absolutely. But God dealt with that. Yes. And I, 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 I woke up in the morning, right? They'd taken me in and they put this cast on me and I finally got to sleep. And I woke up in the morning and I'm in this very primitive ward where it's an old wooden building right on the Caribbean seafront. 
<laughs> and I looked out and there were kitty cats running all over. So my immediate reaction was, well, I must be hallucinating. Mm -hmm. What I found out was that's pest control. That's right. You know, because they're, it's on the, the, the water. So they, let the, they let the cats run loose in the hospital because it keeps the rat population down. And then I see the signs all over this ward that I'm in. It says POW. So I figured I was a prisoner of war. It took me quite some time to find out that meant post-op ward. Right. <laughs> that I wasn't a prisoner of war. But it was so, okay. But meanwhile, while we were there, and Mark had come in from our camp out in the bush, mm -hmm. right? and right across the way from me in, a, in the next bed was a young guy yes. who was dying, in the process of dying. He had a an appendix. Attack. Yeah. And he's dying of that because they didn't treat him. They didn't get it in time. time. Well, that's, and that's the way, true. and that's the way it is there. But Mark went over and shared the gospel yes. with him. You know, I said last week, when we're talking about being prepared, and we're reading from 2 Timothy, I want to remind you what Paul wrote to his son in the faith, Timothy, Timothy when he said, be ready, in season and out. Preach the gospel. Yes. That's what you really, because it's not about you. Yeah. That's a selfish attitude. Everything in your life is going to be about somebody else. Because God is using your life here on this planet to touch other lives. That's right. But you want to know something? Mark was ready. Yes, he was. Because he'd been filled up with the Word. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's all about being ready and not being selfish. You know, children, it's, it's, do you understand when you came into this world? I don't know, I don't know who, what your name is watching this, but when you came into the world, talk about selfish. The first thing you started doing is crying. You came out crying. Now, I knew that there are medical reasons that they attribute that to. That's because they don't appraise it spiritually. I know that with the stain of sin from Adam, they come out, and if, a, if a, that infant coming out could talk, it would say, hey, pay attention to me. <laughs> I need me. I I'm want here. this. I, I want, want that. that. Absolutely. Because we come into this world self-centered. That's right. We do. Now, <laughs> I may, I'm being a little facetious about the crying, but only a very, very little bit. Because watch children, and they are selfish by nature. Yes. Self-centered by nature. You know what? We're, we're called to grow up into all things. We're called to grow up mm -hmm. and be mature in our faith. Yes. One of the first things that needs to go in our life is selfishness. Because we talked about last week. In Proverbs chapter 6, six things does the Lord hate, yea, even seven are an abomination. Pride, self-centeredness is the gateway to sin. When we talk about here in 2 Timothy chapter 3, the first one is love of self. It's the gateway to everything else that comes. So anyhow, I'm, I'm saying this as an encouragement. Obviously, I survived that ordeal. Mm. Not only have I survived that or, ordeal, I, no, I have to go on. Okay. We got, finally, they airlifted, no, they didn't airlift, nobody airlifted me. We had to go and purchase seven tickets on a Honduran airline to get out Commercial of the country. Airline, yeah, yeah. yeah, Honduran. Was, yeah. And get back to the United States. And we flew into Miami. By the way, I got frequent flyer miles for that. I, I insisted on it. I bought seven tickets. Okay. So anyhow, we got to Miami, and then from Miami, they flew me up to Tampa to the VA hospital. Mm -hmm. Now, thank God, I want to tell you, when we lived there, we had no income, we had virtually no money, mm -hmm. we had no insurance, mm -hmm. okay? Right. So you can say, well, boy, you were unprepared. Mm -hmm. I was not unprepared because my hope is in the Lord. Right. And radical Christianity calls for you to trust in the Lord, right. not the world and the things of the world. Right. So somebody said, when we were dealing by telephone back from Belize, they said, well, you know, he, he, a hospital's not going to take him. He doesn't have insurance. And somebody said, well, was he ever in the military? And they made arrangements, and I went to the VA hospital, where, and they took care of everything, right? But when we got to the VA hospital, now remember, we live in the bush, in, in Belize. We get to the VA hospital. Alice cannot, like she did in Belize, stay in the hospital with me. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know Tampa. And so, we know yeah, we were in Tampa. We, had, we didn't know anybody there. We didn't have enough, we don't have a car there, nothing, and Alice has no place to go. But when we first got there, a woman showed up 
who was the mother of somebody in the congregation that I had served as pastor and started in Central Florida, and came up and came and introduced herself to Alice and said, you know, I live, she lived by herself, and she lived five minutes away from the hospital. So she, she insisted she, you know, that Alice go and stay, stay with her. With her. Right. You see, we were prepared to trust in God. And God was faithful. You want to know something? God is always faithful. faithful. He never fails. He never, never fails. fails. Never. And the more impossible the situation is, the more glory he gets. Mm -hmm. Well, if, if you want to read that whole thing, it's, uh, 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 I actually wrote a book about it called The Master's Call. Uh, and you can go to the Bible Talk website or masterscall.org and get a copy of it. Because it is a testimony. It is a testimony that we can trust in God. It's God's faithfulness. But you have to be prepared because if your trust today is in the world, when troubles arise, you will have to depend on the world to take care of those things. Mm -hmm. And they cannot. They will not. They, they, they're, they're not going to have the ability to do that. I mean, we're seeing that all over in the world around us. God, however, never, ever, ever fails. We, we talk about being prepared. The way you get prepared, and I said this last week, is by being prepared. Mm -hmm. By being prepared. Pre prepared. Staying in constant communication with the Lord. It says, devote yourself to prayer. Jesus Christ did not preach that Sermon on the Mount without spending the night in prayer first. That's right. Jesus Christ did not go to the cross without first going into the garden for that conversation with the Father. And in that conversation with the Father, he became totally prepared when Jesus said, Not my will, but thy will be done. And God the Father exalted him. Yes, Jesus died on that cross, but he was prepared. And God the Father raised him from the dead, the firstborn of many brethren. No matter what happens in your life, if you will be prepared, Staying in God's Word, staying in conversation with Almighty God through prayer, not asking Him what He can do for you, but staying in that communications where you're listening as much as you're talking to find out what He wants from you, how He wants to use you, how He wants to bless you, how He wants to touch other lives through you. Your life is supposed to, you are supposed to be, look at the life of Paul and all the things he went through. Talk about testimony. And yet he said, walk always in the triumph of Christ Jesus. That's right. If you are prepared, if you are prepared by a life in the Word, if you are prepared by a life devoted to prayer, if you are prepared, I promise you, you will live in high victory, in triumph in Christ Jesus. You have to die to yourself, and you have to not trust in the money. Money is not the answer. It is not. Go read Job 22 where God says, take your gold, the gold of Ophir, and throw it into the dirt, and I will be your gold. And he will always deliver. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord God, that you never fail, that you watch over your word to perform it, that you love us so much, Father, that you have us in the palm of your hand where no man can snatch us out. Lord, that you watch over us. And, Lord, that we can say, if you're for us, who can be against us? I pray, Father, that our lives would be a living testimony to your love for us and your love for, for others. That we would all have that testimony that boasts of you. That people would be turning to you in these perilous, troubling last days. I just thank you, Father. And I thank you above all for that great gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. God bless you, and goodbye until next time. Far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. But I love that old cross where the dearest and best are away. Of lost sinners.